This video is going to talk about multiplying with decimals. Multiplying with decimals is really not all that different from multiplying with whole numbers. The only difference is we are going to be working with the decimal points at the end. So we're going to multiply like there's no decimal point, and then we're going to look at the decimal at the end. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. We have 2 times 45 hundredths. Now the first thing that you need to know is I'm using a dot for the multiplication sign. That is a very common mathematical sign for multiplication instead of using the x because the x can be, just kidding like that, the x can be mistaken for a variable. So they use a dot instead. You have to be very careful if you use a dot that your multiplication dot is floating so it doesn't get confused with your decimal. So just be aware of that. Now, if I was to multiply 45 times 2, because I can change up the order of multiplication, I would just go ahead and put 45 on top to make my life easier. So I'd have the bigger number, the longer number on top and the, the shorter number on bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing right here. Forty-five times two. Well, let's go ahead and tackle this. Two times five is ten. Two times four is eight, plus the one that I carried is going to be nine. Now, I've done the multiplication. The multiplication's done. All I need to do is I need to do use is I need to look at the uh, the decimal sign. And when I look at the decimal sign, I know that there are two numbers after the decimal sign because I'm going to count the amount of decimal spaces. So there are one, two numbers after a decimal sign. So I'm going to go one, two spots from the end of my number, and that's where my decimal is going to go. So my answer is going to be 0.9, because that zero isn't necessary anymore. So my final answer is going to be 9 tenths. Let's go ahead, let's look at another one. Let's look at 5, point, five and 3 tenths times 12 hundredths. Let's go ahead and set this up first. Just like there are no decimals, there is a decimal there, it was just kind of invisible. So 5 and 3 tenths times 12 hundredths, let's set that up. I have my decimals, I'm ready to go. 2 times 3, I always start from this number right here, 2 times 3 is going to be 6, 2 times 5 is 10, I'm done with the 2, so I cross it off, and this is something I like to do to make sure my numbers are lined up correctly, so I'm going to put an x here, which is actually just a 0, but I know because I'm one place value over here, I'm also going to be down here. 1 times 3 is going to be 3, 1 times 5 is 5, and then I'm not going to multiply that, I'm going to add it. 6 plus 0 is 6. You can still see that, yeah. 3 plus 0 is 3. 1 plus 5 is 6. And now that I have that all figured out, I need to count the amount of decimal sign, of decimal, of numbers after the decimal. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, doesn't matter if it's crossed off. And because there's 1, 2, 3 numbers after the decimal point in my question, I'm going to start at the end and go one, two, three spaces over to find where my decimal goes in my answer. So my answer is going to be 636 thousandths. And I'm going to leave it down here because I want to leave space my problem up here. My next problem is 3 times 16 thousandths. So to set this up, 16 thousandths is the longer number, so I'm going to put the longer number up top, that way I have less to multiply with. So, 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 3 times 0 is 0. Now I'm going to count the amount of numbers after the decimal in the problem. One, two, three. So at the at in my answer, I'm going to start from the end and I'm going to go one, two, three spaces over. So my final answer will be forty-eight thousandths. Let's take a look at one more example. We have 
keep going off screen. We have 2 and 4 tenths times 312 ten thousandths. So let's go ahead and set this up. And I know that I keep putting the longer number up top. You are not wrong if you put the shorter number up top. It's just going to result in a lot more levels for you to add at the bottom. And I like to have less things to do when I'm finished. So I put the longer number up top. So we're going to multiply 4 times 2 is going to be 8. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Done with the 4, so I'm going to cross that off. Now I've got this 2 here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And this was from the other thing, so I don't need to worry about that. 2 times 0 is 0. So when I add these numbers up, 8 plus 0 is just 8. 4 plus 4 is another 8. 2 plus 2 is 4. 6 plus 1 is 7. We don't really need the 0 in there right now. So let's go ahead and count the amount of numbers after the decimal. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means that down below I'm going to start at the end, and I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces and put the decimal. I have an empty space here. We've worked with these empty spaces in the past. We know that any empty space, you put a 0. So now it's going to be your turn to solve a couple of these problems. You are going to go into the form, and you're going to solve 5 times 26 hundredths, and 4 hundredths times 32 hundredths.